Hello, everyone. Last time, the stranger became a friend of the Luxons. So, now I have the important task of recovering a chest of stolen turtle eggs. I mean, the, the chest was also stolen. So, I mean, that, that's why it says what it does. But anyway, I need to go grab it. I uh, don't know what lag spikes are about, but whatever. Um... So that's going to require me to make my way over to here. It's going to be over there. Again, this is one of those quests, like, the design is really annoying when you're playing uh, with a hero party like I am. If you're playing with humans, you can very conveniently have one of your casters pick up the chest. But uh, I don't have that luxury, so I'm going to have to bear that responsibility. What am I using? My Delrim or Recurpo? That seems fine. Ideally, I want to get, like, some sort of useful Zealous Shortbow or something. Zealous Shortbow would be nice, but uh, I don't know what this guy's on about. But uh, the issue with that is I don't, don't have a Zealous Bowstring lying around, I don't think. I'd have to check. But if I did, then I'd have to find a Zell or a, a bow to put it on. All that sort of business. They really needed a uh, weapon upgrade modifier trader in this game. That that would have been extremely useful and extremely helpful. So what we have up here is we have the old chest there, I believe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply poison because I believe this is going to turn hostile. Bandit leader says you're late. Presumably talking to Sergeant Roderick. Yep. We had some troubles. Do you have the item? Yes. Do you have the gold? Of course. It's all there, but count it if you must. With these eggs destroyed and our upcoming attack on... Quiet, fool. I think we have company. You have company. Good old splinter weapon. Oh, yeah. Good old splinter weapon indeed. So you don't actually have to wait for them uh, by the by. You can just... Uh, Roderick is a Kurzik and is apparently repeating his dialogue for some incomprehensible reason. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to carry this chest, and I'm going to have to carry it um, over to there. So, that's just what this quest asks. I will see you over there, probably. Unless something really interesting happens in between, which I don't expect. Okay, we're just about there, and I want to take a moment to pop back in, because this thing is really cool. Uh, it's some sort of jade lighthouse, I think. Um, but it's just this really, really cool thing. Uh, I just took the opportunity to get some additional mapping in, apparently, uh, by taking ways around that might have been long. Like, instead of going that way, I went around. Eh, missed the fact that I could turn in a bit earlier, but we're just about at Yellow Hatchery. So once I get there, I'm going to tweak my party's builds because I'm not entirely happy with how one of our encounters went. Uh, it bodes ill or what is to come. Um, he says, The stolen eggs, what a relief. I can't bear to think of what would have happened to these little guys if you hadn't found them. Listen, if you have the time, head into the hatchery. There's a new caravan heading out, and I am sure they would be happy to have some additional guards. My little babies, shh, don't worry now. Let me know when you're ready. Argo is, let me know when you're ready. Argo is waiting. Let's go. When you are ready, I will let you enter Gyala Hatchery. I am ready. Your entire party is about to be moved to the next area. Make sure all party members are ready first. Do you wish to continue? Yes! I probably blew the levels there a little bit, but... Um... Yeah. You can see it right back there. Let's move it out! For gods know we move it barely more than a crawl.
Here they come. Damn predictable curses. I knew those cowards would come for the young turtles. You, take up the right. Don't let the Kurzix within a hundred paces. I'm glad you're with us. We'll need all the help we can get. Your fight is my fight. Watch yourself out there. The Kurzix are a dastardly bunch. Pay particular care to their juggernauts, the golem-like things that resemble walking trees. They're especially dangerous to the turtles. I'll take care of them. Well then, good luck. We'll see you at Creon Jade Mine. Factions is known for having a ridiculous number of confirmation dialogues in order to be able to enter uh, mission outposts and stuff like what you just saw there. Where I completed the quest, and then I had to say I'm ready to move in, then I had to say all my entire party is ready to move in. It's just, And they cut it down by one uh, dialogue in Nightfall, which was a vast improvement. It's just a little ridiculous here. Factions is also not known for having the best cutscenes. Uh, it's known for being kind of awkward. Um, anyway, Andre here says, So you are the ones coming along with us. Argo told me about you. You may have beaten the three clans at the Convocation, but I was not witness to it. Until I see you fight with my own eyes, your strength is nothing to me. Words on the wind. If we make it to the end of this alive, then your reputation with myself and the rest of the Luxons will be solid as this Sea of Jade. Uh, cool. So, yeah, after you spend a bunch of time getting a bunch of faction, now you get some more faction. Great. Um, I can. I could actually theoretically craft a short bow with someone. I don't know if no. Uh, this person is just a customizer. I should go ahead and customize this though. I'm not going to use that on anybody else. So, um, not a weaponsmith. So I'm going to take a moment to clear out my inventory. But while I do, I want to comment on. Um, so each side has an exclusive mission. You have Gala Hatchery for the Luxons, and. Uh, the Eternal Grove for the Kurzix. Now, I've typically done the Eternal Grove um, because I've typically played as a Kurzix. But the thing is uh, about all this is that the the two missions are about how each side makes their super weapon, as it were. The Luxons, which you just saw uh, the intro cutscene for, and what this entire mission will be about is they need to make their siege turtles. Their turtles are really important to them, and their siege turtles are a key part of how they can engage in combat. Uh, so we're going to see that side of things. On the other hand, the Eternal Grove over in Luxon territory, uh, which I don't actually have it open right now, but it's down in this area somewhere. Um, the Eternal Grove is all about... Uh, instead of that, it's all about the juggernauts. And so it's about what they go through to make the juggernauts. So it's interesting that you kind of see these two missions are, are paralleling each other by being, in many regards, about the ways that each side goes about uh, supporting itself, as it were. Uh, it goes about its, its war effort. And I think that's rather interesting, so... Thought it bore comments. Uh, so I'm going to do some build tweaking stuff. I think he's okay. Why am I using blinding surge? Like blinding surge isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like there was something in particular that I had it going on for. And I don't remember what. I'm okay with running this weird smite monk. It's not, like, the best, per se, but, um, so what I'm looking at with my party right now, though, is, okay, first of all, how many, I'm gonna pop up all of these 
So that way I can see how many instances of fallback I have. One, two, three. Okay, I'm only running the, th the three. So what I want to do is Elias here is doing curses stuff. Spiteful Spirit is pretty great at taking down groups of enemies, but... Um, okay, I'm going to think about... So we're going to have a bunch of allies. So things like Barbs, which increases physical damage to enemies. And um, where is... Shadow... Yes. There's one that I like never use because it's just not worth it most of the time. But um, Mark of Pain right here. Whenever that foe takes physical damage, Mark of Pain deals shadow damage to adjacent enemies. I'm going to bring this one because we're going to have a lot of allies along. I think that this can potentially spread a lot of damage. Um, actually... Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop the command. Uh, I'm probably... Okay, let's just rework him. Like, the speed up dashes are nice. Well, I kind of do want her. So what I want to do with her is I want to switch her over to Thunderclap. Um... Because that's going to do a lot of what I want. But maybe... Okay. I'm thinking through stuff here. Do I have... No. I don't have a second Necromancer. So, okay. So what a lot of my thought process is here. Thunderclap is really useful because... Uh, like, the interrupt is nice. But it's both uh, cracked armor and weakness in an AoE. Um, so it kind of fulfills the role that... I was doing on this guy with weakened armor and the other one. Now, 13's not useful uh, for what I want on him. So I'm going to drop him down some. And I definitely want curses. Uh, he's not going to be bothering with that. In fact, I should probably make him slash monk. Um, and then I definitely need soul reaping. That's fine. Okay. Blood Ritual is useful. So I'm going to make this guy also do minions. Um, probably that tier of minion. Because it's, it's it has really good synergy with these. And we're just going to have a lot of stuff happening that's going to make that useful. Um, now, I have to pick what I want for an elite. I, I mean, I don't, strictly speaking, need to run an elite. There's an argument for Aura of the Lich. Which would make higher level death magic more useful. Um, this makes your minions... This is pretty ridiculous. Order of Undeath is basically almost impossible to use if you're not using a bunch of vampiric minions. Because it, it wrecks you. Otherwise, pretty hard. Um... So if, I might just go with Spiteful Spirit, or he's Slash Monk. So I'm going to actually go with Empathic Removal here, um, because that's super good utility. Like, it's just very, very good utility. Uh, and then I'm going to not Divine Favor. Um, Resurrection Chant is just a really good heal, because it's your current health, right? So... Blood Ritual is really useful for keeping everybody else energized. These are going to... I mean, he's basically going to basically be making bone minions. But there will be a nice meat wall, and there's going to be a lot of dead. And then barbs and mark of pain will spread stuff around, and then that will allow us to remove stuff very nicely. So that's going to be useful. Okay. Line was probably because of fragility, but this is fine. Um, crippling Anguish is really strong against a single target, but I'm going to go with Ineptitude here. I see. I was running Fragility on her because it synergizes well with Incendiary Arrows. Um, but I don't think that's as important. So, um, Do I want to be... Yeah, I guess I'll do two fallbacks. Not the full amount. Otherwise, this is fine. Uh, she's got some AoE damage, some support. Some energy management. Um, this is 
probably pretty good. So the question then is what do I want to do over here? I actually really want to change my build up. Um, I'm going to close these. So what I want to be doing, I had pinned down uh, to be able to slow down some of their warriors. Body shot's going to be useful for energy management for me. Um, but they do more damage to enchanted enemies. Do I want to try running Melandra's arrows? I don't typically, but um, I can bring this. I could run Melandru's arrows. That would be interesting. Uh, I could also run like Melandru's shot, which is fine. Hits a foe that's moving or knocked down. Take more damage than is crippled. I, I'm kind of, I kind of feel like running Melandru's arrows. I don't usually think of this as being especially good, but I'm gonna try it this time just to see how it is. Um, maybe it will confirm my biases against it. Maybe it won't. And let's just go ahead and bring that, because that's just generically useful. So this is energy management. These are just more damage. Um, yeah, natural stance is nice. I guess I'll try running this then for my team. This mission can be kind of challenging, so we'll see how it is. Eventually, so I'm going to do Yellow Hatcher. I'm not sure which one of these it is. Eventually, I will want to do Eternal Grove on her, too, to be able to fill out this book um, and get the benefits from it. Uh, there is a trick in this mission where you can go around the back um, and take out all of the enemy spawns, but I don't feel like doing that. Um, it says, do you see those engines of war mounted on the turtles down there? They can do a lot of damage, especially if they all fire on the same target. There's a guy named Petrus over there. Rock. Uh, it's a Greek name, I believe. Uh, we use smoke canisters to indicate targets for the siege turtles to attack. Just drop one on the ground and get out of the way. The canister will emit smoke and the turtle will fire on that location. I've only got three of them, so be sure to reuse the ones you take and don't leave them behind. Just take them from me if you, as you need them. Okay, move out. Uh, fall back will help move the speed of all of these. So you can see that there's a bunch of, or there's some allies, um, Petrus over there, for example, Argo, who are not showing up. Um, yeah. Riddle Clan, check the young ones. Girls are coming in large numbers. Where's Petrus? Yeah, there's the whatever's. Oh, wait, is it Andre? No. Oh, there he is. Yeah, and you can see their attack. Target the Juggernauts designed to take out even our largest turtles. So the Juggernauts indeed are, as he says, uh, designed to take out even their largest turtles. I don't know how much how many enchantments these guys use, actually. Well, that guy's using some, so... But you can see how chaotic this gets. With uh, sheer number of enemies. Help. That might. There. I'm just going to move the party window up. I mean, technically, that's not doing a whole lot else. There. Uh, gotta do something about these Kurzak monks. So they do use enough en enchantments that Melandru's arrows actually has some benefit, although... Okay, Turtle Clan, move out. That was the first one. I don't think the first one's that difficult. Uh, we still have all of our young turtles, so that's good. 
Um, I have no doubt that the Kurzix... Okay, our very way of life... Let's see. Okay, Turtle Clan. On this day, we are assigned a sacred duty that is crucial to the survival of our clan. Our very way of life ha has become entwined with the lives of these turtles, and it is up to us to ensure their survival and ours. I have no doubt that the Kurzix will make every attempt to stop us from taking these young turtles to safety. Be prepared for the attacks to come at any time from any direction. Uh, which is indeed what is going to happen. So, again, you can use the, the Juggernauts do, in fact, have the ability to perform a flip move on the turtles that will uh, overturn them. They can recover from that. Um, but just be aware that that is a thing that happens. Um, I'm specifically telling the... Yeah, Juggernaut Toss turns them over like that, which is obviously undesirable, but they write themselves after a little bit. Having them target the young turtles is fine, because what that ends up doing uh, is it uh, means that any melee attackers that get in close there are going to get wrecked. Um, so that's why I did that. Oh. There's more coming from the side, so let's keep that keep that going. I don't know why they ran up there. That's not a useful position. I need to move out of the unsteady ground before I attack. It knocks you down if you're attacking, so... My news arrows is one of those skills that sounds really good, but it's so borderline on being an elite skill to me. Wow, does Zarga not? Toss cost them a ton of HP to, to use or something. They have a lot of rangers going on right now, which can apply a startling amount of pressure. The one nice thing about... Um, so this skill would probably be okay at 10 energy if it weren't elite. The, uh, the 5 energy is really what pushes it to be elite, I think. Yeah, it's 18 seconds too, which is actually shorter than uh, preparations usually last. Preparations usually only last... Uh, or usually last 24 seconds, so 18 is pretty short. So perhaps Man Landry's Arrow would have been better. I don't know. It's a cool idea, but just like from a practical standpoint, unless you're in an area where the enemies are enchanted a lot, it's just bleeding is the weakest condition in the game, arguably. It's six damage per second um, by giving minus three HP to gen. Poison is eight, as well as disease. Disease spreads. Um, burning is 14. It's minus seven HP to gen, which is pretty strong. Um... And then those are the damage over time conditions. There's a bunch of other conditions that have other effects than damage over time. Uh, notably, uh, weakness and blind and stuff that reduce damage, days, which makes things easy to interrupt and stuff like that. So I would, I think it's a safe, safe thing to say that um, bleeding is the weakest condition in the game. It, it has some synergies that they've baked into it, but... Mostly it's going to help with uh, triggering fragility, I think. One still has that, yeah. Oh. Look sharp, the enemy sighted us. Here they come. Yeah, you said Turtle Clan move out. And lots of Kurzix coming in fast. So having the uh, minion wall is very useful here. As you might be able to tell.
Kurzik scum, I grow weary of the relentless assaults. Surely they must realize they cannot win. Oh, uh, he's using his uh, special version of Meteor Shower, I think. This is actually going fairly well so far. Hopefully it continues that way. I don't honestly know how hard this one is because I have done it so rarely. I know that the Eternal Grove can be quite challenging. Yeah, okay. Melandru's Arrows is probably a poor call here. Um, Melandru's Shot would probably have been a better choice. Honestly. The, the reason why I say that is because it would stop the warriors from being able to effectively run in. Uh, there's the monk. I want to begin pressuring the monk. I'm basically always going to hit for 48. Uh, at level 20, you have a maximum health of 480 by default. I have a bunch of uh, armor buffs and stuff that's giving me more HP. Uh, but what that means, practically speaking, is that... Uh, okay, I'm doing a kind of like Yeah, he says, Turtle Clan, move out. What that means, practically speaking, is that uh, most NPCs and stuff are going to have 480 HP. As you can see, most of these do. Dunkoro has something going on. I... Dunkoro, why do you have more HP than... Oh. What? Now I'm confused. That's Major Protection Parish, so he should have less HP than normal. Oh, but while he's enchanted, he gets plus 45 health. That's why. Um, but anyway, so by default, they're going to have 480 HP. Protection, Spirit of... Uh, protection or Prot Spirit or whatever. I forget the actual name. Uh, because I always call it Prot Spirit, but Spirit of Protection, I think, is the name. Uh, caps the damage you can take from a single source to 10% of your maximum HP, which, needless to say, is quite good at defending you. Uh, and as a result, it, uh, it means that, because that's what the monks are using to enchant themselves, it means that they are... They are going to take only uh, forty-eight damage because they can't take more. I mean, you're right there. Aura of the Juggernaut, I believe, is an energy regen aura, if I remember correctly. Get my minions dueling things over there. Two arms! Two arms! The Kurzaks are approaching. Yes, they are. They're over here. Yeah, so you can see that the drop, the protective spirit. Okay, they've got some sort of other spirit going on there that's annoying me. Um, so if you see an enemy in this game that's like regening health like crazy and stuff, just stop trying to do things to them. Like, that guy's tanking a lot, so maybe hit the other guy. Oh, I don't see a whole lot of warriors coming in, so I'm actually going to move this over to here for a moment. Just to... clear that out <laughs> aggressively. The turtles do deal damage, that's for sure. Okay. 
Yeah. I'd love to see the fragility spikes um, when Ray of Judgment goes off. It'd be interesting to be able to see all the damage from all of your uh, NPCs and everything. Okay, what's going on now, Argo? I don't see any more enemies. Oh, there's another group running up now. Okay. Uh, yeah, they have some warriors. Argo is quite powerful, incidentally. Uh, so I'm trying to just go through all of their uh, characters just in order to... Uh, Splinter Weapon is a defensive. Wow! A bunch of things just died. You can tell because I got a bunch of 12s showing up on my screen. The 12s indicating the uh, experience points that I got. Yeah, I don't even need to use skills on them. Oh, I got a gold armor drop. That's probably worthless, but I mean, it's probably worth a couple hundred gold. But not an unusually amount. Okay, Turtle Clan, move out, Argo says. So that tells you everybody's gone. I'm going to drink some water now. I am, for the record, planning on making today, like, Yala Hatchery. So I don't... That's why I'm trying to make sure to... Hopefully say things that are interesting during all of this, because I'm planning on that being, like, most of it. Petrus, what are you doing all the way back there? This is a neat little area. There's a lot of really cool areas in the Jade Sea, actually. So, we are... I don't spend a lot of time in these zones. Where are we ending up? Down that way somewhere, I guess. If I did this mission a lot more, I'd know landmarks, but I just don't. Barbs may also be something that triggers guys to suddenly go down, now that I think about it. These minions are super weak. They're level 10. They're not meant to go that bulky, but... Okay, it looks like this is probably the next spot right here. So everybody gets in position. It can begin. But um, Melandru's shot may have been a bit better because it would stop the warriors from being able to run as well because it would cripple them while they're moving. Tough call. Uh, that skill definitely is a questionably elite anyway. A lot of its power comes from the fact that it has a one second activation time. Um, are we getting attacked? I, I assumed we were. I don't friggin' know. I'm gonna start the party. Enemies approach! Defend the caravan! Of course, the enemies that are approaching are coming from the other side than the side that I went to, but whatever. Here we are. Well, you got me. What are you... Word of devotion, you say? Okay, these juggernauts do need to go down, though. Today, we defeat these invaders in our own lands. Tomorrow, we sweep across their lands like the tide and crush them. Then you become the invaders, and they have the same narrative about you. Wahaha. Or did you not think of that, Mr. Argo? Please don't hurt my turtles. They're my turtles. They're very friendly. Except when they're not, but you know. Oh, yeah, one of the other properties. You see I'm hitting for ridiculous damage from up here. 
Uh, that's because one of the properties in this game is, at least with bows anyway, um, attacking from higher up gives you more range and damage. Okay, you need to not be standing over there. Okay. We had uh, our first tur young turtle die. I'm actually going to grab this smoke canister because there's a lot of dudes over here and it's not doing me any good over there. Funnily enough, this uh, blue rune blue armor is probably is more likely to be worth something than the gold one because superior runes have a huge penalty to maximum health which tends to make them less desirable for a lot of players um so there's a chance that they're worth something but it's lower i'm gonna try to make use of this I don't know, I'm assuming that they can hit Siege over there. Yeah, they can! Cool. I mean, I'd prefer not to lose any young turtles, because that would be master, but... Eh. It's not... I'm more concerned about just completing the mission. Which hopefully happens soon. How long have we been here? 20 minutes. I don't know how long this mission is. It's going to be fairly consistent, I imagine. I mean, if you defeat all the enemies faster, it's going to be faster, of course. They do have these really cool, like... I don't even know how they're supposed to work. They're just these wooden frame... Sea creature shaped things, and I, I don't know how they're supposed to function, but they're really cool looking. Ah, here we are. This is the two thirds point, I guess. Or I assume, anyway. That's a lot of archers. Man, these cutscenes are so janky. Oh, yeah, and minions always misbehave in these cutscenes so badly. It's ridiculous. And minion masters are super good in factions, so, like, people always bring them with them. And and then they just... They really mess with the cutscenes.
This is interesting because in these cut scenes, this kind of shows the Loxons as generally uh, better than the Kurziks because the Loxons here are like, we got to save the Kurziks. And in the Eternal Grove, the uh, Loxons come like waving a white flag like, hey, look, the Afflicted are here. We would rather work with you than fight you. So that's really, really rather interesting. Um, I don't know where the optimal place for this is. I'm just going to drop this here. So I don't know if they can come down both sides. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, yeah. I don't know how this part is going to go in that regard, so. I mean, they certainly are coming down this way. So, I'm going to definitely defend this side. Wait, why do I have five young turtles again? That's strange. Well, I definitely hit this guy really hard because of my Landry's arrows, but it's monk. The afflicted monks need to go. I'm actually going to go ahead and move this. Um, smoke canister, maybe? I, I just legitimately don't know if they come down that way or not. Hmm. If I knew more, I could like act on like what would be smart and stop doing that. Oh, well, that was really simple. I feel like Eternal Grove is harder, actually. Or at least than what this experience was like. Use their hearts for sale. No, they'd be far more valuable as workers. We'll make them clean the turret sheds. You scum. You will pay for this. Those are pretty big words from someone who's about to learn the true meaning of pain. You must stop your squabbling. This feud has gone on long enough. So why should we stop it now? Because now you have a common enemy. Who? Do you not see? Shiro the Betrayer has returned. Shiro is dead. Even the Kurzix will tell you that. How do you account for the Afflicted, then? Where Shiro goes, the Afflicted are never far behind. He's the source. And if we're fighting these monstrosities, then he's sure to be near. As much as it pains me to admit, Togo is right. There is no other explanation. Shiro has returned. They make sense. And what would you have us do, Master Togo? I would have you stop bickering like school children and start forming an alliance. Only together will we have the strength to defeat him. Forgive me, Master Togo. You have never steered us wrong before. We will do whatever it takes to destroy Shiro once and for all. Even if that means allying with the Kurzix. The Luxons seem a lot worse in this cutscene. Let us find Brother Menno and hope he has made as much progress with the Kurzix as we have here today. Brother Menno. He was with Baron Vazburg. They were on their way to the Harvest Temple. Then we too must head to the Harvest Temple. 
Thank you. Oh, that thing can move somehow. So, yeah, expert's reward is actually pretty reasonable for that. I do feel like I could potentially have done a little bit better, but oh well. I was close. Anyway, that's that. Um, next time I'm going to have to figure out... I, I guess it's Petrus who probably gives me the... Um, the next primary quest, isn't it? This is an unprecedented action. Luxons and Kurzix fighting side by side. Allied with the Empire against an evil so great, it has erased all boundaries between us. I don't think that's quite true. You must travel into the depths of the unwaking waters, and at the heart of this great whirlpool, find the Harvest Temple, Huan Jun, which has been imprisoned in Jade these 200 years. There, you will obtain the power that will help us send Shiro back to the underworld. Uh, so, that's what I'm going to do next time. Uh, until then, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.